The massive mining vessel Ceres drifted silently through the asteroid belt, its powerful drills biting into the rocky surface of a promising new claim. Inside, the crew of 30 went about their daily routines, each a cog in the well-oiled machine of deep space resource extraction. Leon shuffled down the narrow corridor, his mop leaving streaks of soapy water in its wake. At 35, he was the oldest junior maintenance worker on board, a fact that didn't escape the notice or derision of his crewmates. He kept his head down, focusing on the task at hand, as always. Hey, Leon, don't forget to polish the floors with your drool while you're at it, jeered Thomas, a cocky young geologist, as he strode past. Leon merely nodded, used to such jabs. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the ship. All hands to stations, the captain's voice boomed over the intercom. We've hit something big. Leon hurried to his assigned emergency post, heart racing. Hours passed as the ship's scientists and engineers worked feverishly. Finally, the captain called a ship-wide meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, she announced, her eyes gleaming with excitement, we've made the discovery of a lifetime. Our drills have unearthed an alien artifact of immense age and unknown origin. A hologram flickered to life, displaying a strange, opalescent sphere about the size of a beach ball. Its surface swirled with mesmerizing patterns that seemed to shift and change as Leon watched. Doctor. Yara Singh, the team's xenoarchaeologist, stepped forward. Initial scans suggest this artifact is millions of years old. Its composition and energy readings are unlike anything we've ever encountered. This could revolutionize our understanding of the universe. The crew buzzed with excitement. Leon felt a mix of awe and unease as he stared at the hologram. Something about it made his skin crawl, but he couldn't put his finger on why. Over the next few days, the artifact was brought aboard and placed in a secure lab. The entire crew was eager to catch a glimpse of it, and Leon found himself assigned to clean the observation deck overlooking the lab more often than usual. As he worked, he noticed subtle changes in his crewmates. Doctor. Singh became increasingly possessive of the artifact, snapping at anyone who got too close. Captain Ray has spent hours staring at it, neglecting her duties. Even easygoing Thomas seemed on edge, picking fights over trivial matters. Leon mentioned his concerns to his direct supervisor, but was brushed off. You're imagining things, Leon. This is the most exciting thing to happen to any of us. Of course people are acting differently. But as the days wore on, the changes became more pronounced. Leon overheard heated arguments, saw suspicious glances exchanged in the mess hall, and noticed crew members sneaking into the lab at odd hours. One night, unable to sleep, Leon made his way to the observation deck. To his shock, he saw half the crew gathered around the artifact, their eyes glazed over, swaying slightly as if in a trance. The sphere pulsed with an eerie light, its swirling patterns more hypnotic than ever. Leon backed away, his heart pounding. Something was very wrong aboard the series, and he seemed to be the only one who noticed. As he hurried back to his quarters, one thought kept repeating in his mind, why wasn't he affected like the others? Little did Leon know, this was only the beginning of a nightmare that would test him to his very limits. The days that followed were a slow descent into madness aboard the series. Leon watched helplessly as the crew, his friends and colleagues, transformed into paranoid, aggressive versions of themselves. The once orderly ship became a powder keg of tension, ready to explode at the slightest provocation. Doctor. Singh barricaded herself in the lab, refusing to let anyone near the artifact. It's mine she shrieked when security tried to intervene. You can't have it Captain Reyes did nothing, spending most of her time in her quarters, muttering about voices and cosmic truths. Leon tried to keep his head down and stay out of the way, but it was becoming increasingly difficult. His immunity to whatever was affecting the others made him a target of suspicion. One evening, as Leon was mopping near the engine room, Thomas cornered him. The once friendly geologist's eyes were wild, his movements erratic. What's your secret? Huh, he snarled, shoving Leon against the wall. Why aren't you like the rest of us? What makes you so special? I... I don't know what you're talking about, Leon stammered, his mop clattering to the floor. Please, Thomas, you're not yourself. Let me help you. Thomas laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Help me? 
You? You're nothing, Leon. A nobody. But not for long. Soon we'll all be part of something greater. You'll see. As Thomas stalked away, Leon slumped against the wall, his mind racing. He had to do something, but what? Who could he trust? Gathering his courage, Leon decided to investigate on his own. Late that night, he snuck into the ship's computer core, using his maintenance codes to access the security feeds. What he saw chilled him to the bone. Crew members were gathering in secret, performing strange rituals around makeshift shrines dedicated to the artifact. Others were sabotaging critical systems, muttering about preparing for ascension. And in the lab, Doctor, Singh was conducting horrific experiments on herself, her body twisted and changed by prolonged exposure to the artifact. As Leon watched, Captain Reyes entered the lab. The two women argued violently, then began to physically fight over the artifact. To Leon's horror, the sphere began to pulse with energy, and both women screamed as their bodies seemed to melt and fuse together. Leon staggered back from the console, bile rising in his throat. This was worse than he could have imagined. The artifact wasn't just influencing the crew's minds, it was changing them physically as well. Desperately, Leon tried to send a distress signal, but found that all communications had been disabled. He was trapped on a ship full of people descending into madness and body horror, with no way to call for help. As the realization of his situation sank in, alarms began to blare throughout the ship. The reactor was overloading, whether by accident or sabotage, Leon couldn't be sure. But one thing was clear if he didn't act fast, none of them would survive to see another day. With time running out and the crew turning into monsters both mentally and physically, Leon knew he had to find a way to stop the artifact and save whoever he could, including himself. But how could one unassuming maintenance worker stand against a force that had overwhelmed everyone else on board? As chaos erupted around him, Leon steeled himself for the fight of his life, still wondering why he alone had been spared the artifact's influence. Chaos reigned aboard the series as Leon frantically made his way through the ship's corridors. The reactor's alarm blared incessantly, its urgent wail punctuated by the inhuman screams of his mutating crewmates. He had to reach the engine room to prevent a catastrophic meltdown, but the path was fraught with danger. As he rounded a corner, Leon came face to face with what used to be the ship's cook now a grotesque amalgamation of flesh and metal. Join us, Leon it gurgled, lurching towards him. Leon's heart raced as he ducked under a flailing appendage and sprinted past, his years of traversing the ship's maintenance tunnels finally proving useful. In the engine room, Leon found a nightmare scenario. The reactor was indeed overloading, its safeguards manually overridden. As he worked desperately to stabilize it, a voice croaked behind him. Step away, Leon it was Thomas, or what remained of him. Half of his body had fused with the ship's hull, his eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. The artifact demands our ascension. We must all become one. This isn't ascension, Thomas Leon pleaded, continuing to work on the reactor. It's destruction. We'll all die if I don't stop this. Thomas lunged at Leon, his movements unnaturally fast. Leon, surprised by his own reflexes, managed to dodge, causing Thomas to crash into the control panel. The impact seemed to momentarily clear Thomas's mind. Leon, he gasped, destroy it. The artifact, it's the only way. Before Leon could respond, Thomas's body convulsed, the alien influence reasserting control. Leon took the opportunity to finish stabilizing the reactor and fled towards the lab. The corridors were a gauntlet of horror. Mutated crew members lurked around every corner, some begging for help, others trying to attack him. Leon's heart broke for his friends, but he pushed on, knowing their only hope lay in destroying the artifact. He finally reached the lab, finding it in disarray, the fused monstrosity that was once Doctor. Singh and Captain Raz guarded the pulsing artifact. You don't understand the creature spoke with two voices in unison. This is our destiny, our evolution. No, Leon said, his voice steadier than he felt. This is our end, he lunged for the artifact, his hands closing around its smooth surface. Pain lanced through his body, visions of cosmic horrors flashing before his eyes. But unlike the others, Leon's mind remained his own. With a strength he didn't know he possessed, 
Leon lifted the artifact and smashed it against the lab's reinforced wall. Once, twice, three times he struck, each impact sending shock waves of agony through his body. On the fourth strike, the artifact shattered. A blinding light filled the ship, accompanied by a sound that seemed to exist in Leon's mind rather than his ears. He felt something vast and alien recoil, its hold on the crew broken. As the light faded, Leon found himself surrounded by his unconscious crewmates, their bodies slowly returning to normal. He activated the emergency beacon, finally able to call for help. In the days that followed, as rescue ships arrived and the survivors were treated, Leon was hailed as a hero, but he found no satisfaction in it. The question that had plagued him throughout the ordeal remained unanswered. Why had he alone been immune? As he watched Earth grow larger in the viewscreen, Leon realized he might never know. Perhaps it was his perceived weakness that had been his strength. Perhaps his simple, steadfast nature had anchored him against the artifact's influence. Or perhaps it was just random chance. Whatever the reason, Leon knew one thing for certain the universe was vaster and more dangerous than any of them had imagined. And somewhere out there more artifacts might be waiting, ready to lure in other unsuspecting explorers with promises of ascension and evolution. Leon shuddered at the thought and turned his gaze to the welcoming blue of his home planet. For now, at least, he was content to keep his feet firmly on the ground. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.